Hey, I've got one of the top multi-unit owners in the country with us today. He's also a multi-brand owner. You're not going to want to miss this. This is the Franchise Pitfalls and Profit Show. Each week, we bring you the challenges and triumphs of being in the franchise development and consulting business. The things you need to make money faster. And now your host, one of the most successful franchise developers in North America, Don Shin. All right. I get the opportunity to welcome Jerry Akers, uh, a good friend. Uh, we met in uh, in a different life, in a different brand a long, long time ago. And then we hadn't really touched base for a while. Uh, and then suddenly Jerry just popped on the mark. Not suddenly. He's been working his butt <laughs> off to do this. Uh with, with a multi-brand, uh, pardon me, with a multi-unit strategy and now a multi-brand strategy, which I really, really, really want to get into today because our audience will just be, uh, will go bonkers over over how to do this. This is exactly the kind of thing they're looking to be able to do. But I'm getting way ahead of myself. So uh, Jerry and I met when we were both with a former brand. And uh, I'm going to pass the baton to Jerry just to give us a little, little background, uh, uh, a little color as to how you got into franchising, that kind of thing. Sounds great, Don. Thanks for having me on the show today. Uh, so we got into brand franchising about 18 years ago. We bought one Great Clips salon and seriously, it was just, we had corporate careers and we just wanted to have some additional income for retirement. Uh, but we quickly discovered the beauty of uh, franchising with scalability and so on. So uh, we ended up buying out two or three other owners continuing to grow that brand. We now have 34 locations across two states. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. And, and then, you know, my kids decided that uh, they were running the business and uh, I had worked enough hours. Maybe I should consider retirement. That worked for about two weeks and I got bored. So uh, I bought another brand, the Joint Chiropractic. I'm a regional developer for that brand, Don, which is a little bit different, but uh, it allows me the opportunity to do that job as well as be a franchisee. So currently I've got five open clinics across Iowa and Nebraska. We'll be adding three or four more this year. And I support franchisees who have bought licenses from me in a couple cities as they continue to grow into franchising through the joint. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, you know, the market today, I'd say probably for the last 15, 18 months has really been looking for uh, the opportunity to add revenue streams uh, very, very, I think the mood is very uncomfortable, uh, dependent on an employer, uh, sure. and, but, but they can't, you know, like totally cut the cord, you know, and, and, and just start the business. So it's interesting. You had uh, a similar thought a long time ago. So that's, uh, I think that's, you know, that's really, really cool. Um, the other thought that popped in my mind real quick was, you know, and, and by the way, folks, Jerry, uh, Jerry's on the board of directors for the IFA. Uh, Jerry and I went to convention together. Uh, well, separately, but but we were together a lot. Uh, Jerry introduced me all over the place, which was uh, which was awesome. Thank you again, my friend, for doing that. Um, but um, the the lead off, I, I'd like to use this quote, or I'm paraphrasing, but the lead off speaker was the CEO of McDonald's, and if you remember, he said something to the effect of entrepreneur or franchising is the is the path or the road into entrepreneurism and generational wealth, which is what you know, clearly what you and, and your family are doing. So, uh, well, let's get started on the multi-unit side of what you've done. Uh, talk to me what, you know, what do you think the benefits are? Because again, that's kind of a, a, a hot thing right now. People wanting to, to you know, not just, because just opening one of something is kind of like getting a job, you know, replacing right. a job. And that's okay for some people, but the whole multi-unit uh, concept, I think is really, really cool for those who have the leadership and the vision to scale. So tell me a little bit about how you, you know, how you start, you, you, I know you started it by, by um, uh, buying some, some uh, underperformers, but talk to me about what you were thinking through this whole multi-unit strategy. Sure. Well, Don, as I kind of touched on, we bought the first one just for extra income, but quickly, you know, we used our corporate background. We used our skill sets and those kinds of things. And we doubled the revenue in six months for this underperforming one. So that was pretty phenomenal. And we quickly discovered we had a little bit of a, a, a skill doing this. So uh, we decided we were approached actually by somebody that was struggling with their units. They had four units and decided to 
we looked at it and said, you know, we did it with one. We can probably do it with a few more. So we added four more. Uh, within about a year, we had doubled the revenue of those four and wow. actually moved one of them to a better location. So that kind of showed us that the scalability side of franchising was was just crazy. And uh, so what we ended up doing was we set out and you know me, Don, I'm a sales guy at heart. So uh, I reached out to other franchisees in our market and said, you know, if you get to the point where you're unhappy with this or you're uncomfortable or you want to move on in a different direction, we'd love to consider buying you out. So we set out on a path to buy out the other franchisees in the area. We ended up, it's kind of like a monopoly. We cornered the market basically is what happened. And uh, we went back to corporate, asked them to give us a uh, an exclusive for the area. So we could then start out developing new ones in that area without fear of, you know, perhaps other franchisees coming in and, wow. and taking spots from us. And then uh, we ended up with about 18 in that market at that time. And uh, we had been talking to franchisees in other markets in surrounding states was approached by somebody to buy uh, 10 of theirs, negotiated a deal. And then in the middle of COVID, we bought 10 more out there. And we're still kind of moving and shaking on that, whether it's building new ones or uh, uh, expanding with, uh, you know, uh, acquisitions. But here's what I'll tell you. The thing that we love about the scalability and multi-unit side of this is it becomes a little bit more like a corporate thing, Don. You, you end up, you can you can hire some mid-level management to do a lot of the day-to-day -day type things and that kind of stuff. And we, we now kind of manage them from afar, if you will. Yeah. So, you know, for somebody, you touched on it, you buy one unit many times. I, I've got a good buddy that owns a sandwich shop, a franchise sandwich shop. Well, quite often he's in there making sandwiches. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, God love him. I'm glad he's doing it. He's happy with it and so on. But what ended up happening was he discovered, because I've been mentoring him for some time, he discovered what we've done. So now he owns four of them and he's no longer making sandwiches because he's now managing people that do that. And I think that's one of the beauties of the of the multi-unit side of this. So the, the type of, for and again, I, I think you know our audience, it's, it's uh, broker consultants, it's uh, typically emerging brand franchisors. Uh, so... So one question comes to mind is when when you approached Great Clips about this, what what was their reaction to you? You know, wanting you know wanting to scale in in such a large way. You know, uh, we had proven our value by that point in time, Don, by taking underperforming clinics or salons and turning them around. And so um, when and we knew the people at corporate. So when we approached them, we just said, you know, we've already done this. Literally, I said, I've done my part. Now you do your part. I, I, if you want what I've done in the existing clinics we've taken over and the new ones we've built, allow us the opportunity to add more locations and we will, it'll be a win for you and a win for us because you're dealing with one franchisee in that market rather than multiple franchisees. We're a proven entity. We, you know, you know what right. we're going to do. So just allow us a phased in build out process so that we can do it over like five to seven years or something like that. And we'll build this entire market out for you. You don't have to, you don't have to market to new franchisees. You don't have to search out new franchisees. You don't have to train new franchisees. We will do the work for you. And they were excited about that. So they allowed us to do it. We we love our friends at Great Clips, the people in the C-suite. And, uh, you know, I think it's been a, a, a mutual benefit type situation on both sides. And if I'm talking, frankly, when I think of emerging brands, finding somebody that would take on a region or build multiple units is one of the fastest ways to grow, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and I would say for, if you get the right people, obviously, but far less uh, uh, headaches, you know, far less people to have to work with. I mean, selling, you know, selling five multi-unit owners versus 50 units is like right. just a different dynamic. So uh, I know emerging brands are often hesitant to do that, uh, but uh, but you're right. I think if it's, uh, if it's the right model, I, I, it's a great way to go. It's absolutely well, a great way to go. And I understand their hesitancy and you touched on it, Don. If you, if you, you know, if you saddle the wrong horse in this case, if you pick the wrong franchisee, then you've locked up an area that can't be developed by somebody else. And you're waiting on this person to, you know, get their act together and get it done. So an emerging brand would have to make a good decision about who they choose to do it with. Perhaps a phased in approach where, you know, you buy two or three licenses. And if you do well with those over the next five years, we'll sell you the rest of the area or something like that. But 
bottom line is if you find one good one, one good franchisee that will do a great job of building that out, it's a great way to take a little bit of a load off of you and have some consistent income and performance. Yep, absolutely. Now, the, the second question on the multi-unit owner, uh, again, because our uh, target audience is uh, co- broker consultants, uh, people that, right. are, that are placing people in units. So when you think of a multi-unit owner, you mentioned, you know, corporate, but can you expand a little bit, you know, when, when, who is a good, you know, what's the profile of a really good multi-unit owner versus somebody that probably ought to stay with a single unit? Any thoughts? Sure. Yeah, sure. I think skill sets for one thing. So you can, if I were a, a broker or a brand looking at somebody, I think they have to have more corporate type skill sets because you have, in my opinion, now this is just my opinion. I believe you have to have proven that you can manage a lot of people or multiple units in a corporate type entity uh, to show that you can do it in this kind of situation. When you're working for somebody, Don, and all of us have worked for somebody at some point in our career, you kind of follow orders. They tell you, they give you your marching orders and you just go and do it. When you're out on your own, as a, especially a multi-unit franchisee, you've got to understand what has to happen. So having somebody that's already been there and done that at some other level, probably in corporate America, that should give a broker or a brand a little bit of a comfort knowing that they've already proven themselves at that level. And if they did it there, they can most likely do it as a franchisee. Uh, I would also have a very uh, close connection with that franchisee moving forward if I were the brand to make sure that they are comfortable as they continue to grow into whatever their development uh, process is. So they don't get too far behind because that proves to be a a sticking point for both sides of that equation. So, um, so anybody that's, uh, or most people that say that's in a higher level uh, corporate position, have managed a lot of people probably had, you know, managed like different offices around the country uh, that would, you know, the, so the broker consultant should probably be talking multi-unit with almost every one of those those type of people. I, absolutely, Don. I think those people have already done it. I, I do not think they'll miss a beat in taking on a multi-unit for franchising. Um, and maybe you could go even a step down if you've got just a really good management type person, even if they haven't had multiple branches or something like that. I think they've still had to almost create their own workflow throughout their their employment. Yeah. And that's what you do as a franchisee, right? You've got a list of things you've got to get done. Uh, you have responsibilities and they're very time sensitive. So making sure you're checking those off every morning when you get going, I think that's critical. And again, corporate people have done that. So as the, uh, I'll shift over back over to the emerging brand folks. So, so they bring these type of people in, uh, they're talking, you know, they're talking to the, uh, about multi-units is there anything as the emerging brands that they should be aware of? Because because the corporate folks, like when I was in corporate, you know, corporate, I didn't know what a franchise was. I mean, I knew, you know, I did business with, you know, I bought hamburgers at McDonald's, but sure. I didn't really understand franchising. So uh, again, especially since you've got a you've got a training arm for franchisees, uh, anything that the emerging brand guys should do with these corporate folks that that are now uh, developing for them. Well, I think for one thing, put it in terms they understand, you know, if they've been in corporate America, if even if they haven't managed multiple units, the organization they worked for probably had them and they dealt with some of the infrastructure that worked with that. So put it in terms that they can understand. And I think it'll be just very clear to them. I think understanding franchising overall is important, Don. A lot of times in franchising, the biggest problems we face is people buy units and they don't really understand that they're buying a system. And they've got to follow the system. You're not creating your own system once you buy this thing. You've got to follow the guidelines. And so having uh, the time and effort and tools to educate that person on what franchising really is so that they don't think, you know, again, we talk about relating to their corporate experience. Well, in corporate America, part of your job may be to create new income streams and to create new processes and things like that to streamline uh, your business that you're working in. In, corp- in, in franchising, there's a little bit of that, but for the most part, you're following the playbook that you've bought. So you have to make sure you understand that. So again, when you're talking to these people as a brand or a broker, they need to understand franchising basics. Franchising 101 is what I call it before we get too deep into it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I, I, you know, it's funny in, in our, uh, in our uh, former brand that we were in together, yeah. I'll never forget People, you know, I would hear these people, they would be sitting in their office all day working on uh, changing, 
uh, the PowerPoints, you know, that that uh, that people yep. were that the system gave us, the franchise or gave us. Well, I didn't like the wording in this one, or I would say it this way, or I didn't like the colors. Yeah, you know, I remember one person, okay, I'm changing all the colors schemes out. And and then I'm there like, what are you doing? <laughs> I know. Well, Don, and it's it's the same in franchising because I literally in coaching and mentoring franchisees around the country, I see it constantly. You know, they get in trouble. And for the the majority of the time, they get in trouble because they're trying to usurp the system. They're trying to create something new or go outside the system for some reason. And if it's been successful, which is why we buy it, right? Well, you yeah. buy a franchise because you've looked at the FDD, you know what others are doing, you know the background on it, and, and you're comfortable with it. And then it, inevitably, as soon as you buy it, you decide to change it. Well, <laughs> Many of them that I have mentored, we have to, and you touched on it with your comments about the PowerPoint. Let's spend all of the time changing the PowerPoint and put it into marketing. Because yeah. when you're marketing, bringing people in, you're going to, you're going to make money. When you're changing the PowerPoint, you probably won't make money. And franchising is <laughs> the same way. Follow the system. It's yep. been proven. It works. Don't mess around with it. Go spend that time doing something else. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, let's uh, let's uh, shift a little bit because I know you've you've gone out now uh, with a and developed a a what I call a multi brand strategy on top of the multi units. So I'm I'm really excited to to hear about this. This is something that uh, working with private clients that I have. This is something we've we've pursued to be quite quite honest uh, in targeting um, targeting companies, uh, franchisors that have a, a strong multi-unit presence target their owners, their franchisees right. for possible other other brands. So um, tell me what your thoughts were on that. And let, let's chat about that a little bit more. Sure. Well, if I've already done it once, I ought to be able to do it again. That's really the baseline. That's where it started. Once you learn the ins and outs of franchising, I think you can take just about any uh, brand and be successful with it. I chose to stay in a personal service type brand because Great Clips is hair. The joint chiropractic is obviously uh, adjustments for your back and, and health and th those types of things. So in essence, I was looking at selling to the same customer. Yeah, uh, yeah. Really, I mean, we're looking. For, here's what I broke it down, Don. Um, the real estate is the same between Great Clips and the joint chiropractic. We want the same space. We want the same demographics. We want the same traffic. We do some of the same marketing. I mean, so much of it was um, things that I had already been successful at in franchising. So, you know, I'm relearning a little bit of it because we're adjusting, uh, we're adjusting backs and dealing with personal health and those kinds of things. But really, in my case, I saw it as having already done it. So I don't have to learn a whole lot about it. I just need to kind of adjust a little bit. And frankly, that's exactly what's happened because you've already learned the the basics of it. Just go do those same things again. You may have to tweak them a little bit for your new brand because there is, you know, there's a few odds and ends between the two brands, but for the most part, you already know what you're doing. So I saw it as a chance to, to diversify. I think that's important. Um, we do it in corporate America. Why wouldn't you do it as a franchisee? Um, I am a big one at developing people, Don. You've known me for a yeah. long time. So I develop one person who has the thirst and the desire, usually a younger person with a college degree that's worked in corporate for a few years, uh, who wants to someday own their own business. And I bring them on as my general manager, ops manager, put them in place. Um, the guy I've got running the joint is doing 97% of the work in the joint now. I'm doing all the corporate stuff. He does everything else. So by adding those different brands, we just diversify across a wide range. It gives us a lot of income streams. It gives us a lot of security in the environment, the economic environment that we see and so on. So I saw it as a, as a really simple way to continue to grow and expand. And the hiring of the general manager, so to speak, was that something that either of the brands helped you with or was that really your, your test no. measure? No. And, you know, when you get in franchising, you learn quickly that franchisors are distancing themselves with any, from anything to do with um, employees because of government regulations and those kinds of things. So, no, that was entirely on me. But, Don, I, again, with my experience, I had in my mind what I was looking for in a person to run this. So I literally made a list and then I, I went out and first you check your personal contacts, right, to see if there's somebody in there that fits that bill. And in my case, uh, I talked to three or four people that I thought would be good fits. It wasn't for them right now. The, the other one I went to was ecstatic, 
ready to uh, kind of dead end job in corporate America. Uh, didn't know what he was going to do to continue to grow. And frankly, I find this quite often in people that I hired on. They want to control their own destiny. Yep. They yep. want to see the results of the work they put in directly. And so I found this young man, uh, coincidentally, an athlete. I sometimes see some correlation there because they've been very competitive in the back in, you know, in the previous life. So bottom line is I brought him in. I spent about a year training him, much of it right next to me while I made decisions and negotiated leases and, you know, the whole band of things that we have to deal with. Uh, and this young man is phenomenal now. I would put him in front of anybody and let him run a franchise and he would kill it. That is awesome. That is awesome. Now, uh, I hadn't thought about this or wasn't necessarily going to talk about this, but based on putting people in the right the right places, uh, I know you're bringing your your family or family members into the business, uh, and I know they're passionate about that. And I know you have a lot of confidence in them. Tell tell me a little bit more about how you decided to do that, and and any of the challenges, you know, and dynamics of of family sure. and key roles. Well, uh, sometimes working with family can be challenging, as many people can attest to. And so our daughters, uh, our daughters grew up working very hard. Um, my wife and I flipped houses. We had rental properties. We owned businesses. We did all kinds of things. And our kids worked with us from the time they could walk. So they kind of grew up doing it. Uh, when we were expanding quite rapidly, we were reaching a point where we weren't sure where we were going to have to add personnel. That was the bottom line. And so um, uh, our oldest daughter had graduated and uh, her job was uh um, not a long-term job. Let's just put it that way. It had no, no long-term deal. She was going to have to find another job and we needed her skill sets. So I went to her and said, have you ever thought about being in a family business, whatever, uh, you know, this is where we think you could fit in. Uh, she agreed. We brought her on. She spent a year. She basically ended up doing most of my job in that business. My wife did the back office. I did all the operations. So my daughter rode with me for a year. Uh, you'll sense a trend here, Don. <laughs> My daughter rode with me for a year. The first six months, she listened and took notes and watched and uh, uh, learned from me. And we would debrief as we drove from meeting to meeting or something like that. The second six months, she took the lead role and she started running meetings and negotiating. And I would listen in the background and then we would also debrief going down the road. And then at the end of that time, I turned it over to her and we've never looked back. Our younger daughter went to college and in the midst of her college process decided, see, she had done payroll for us when she was in high school or helped my wife. Uh, partway through college, she said, you know, I'm just not excited about my path. I want to go into what you guys are doing. So she finished her college career getting degrees in uh, accounting, uh, human resources with a minor in psychology. And she ended up taking over all of our uh, back office stuff, including uh, payroll and benefits and, you know, dealing with a lot of the employees. So the bottom line for us there was we were able to put them in place. Uh, once they proved they could do it, we started backing off because it's, there's nothing worse than having your parent look over <laughs> your shoulder. Um, and it, bottom line is, Don, they're smarter than I am. They come from a different background. Many of our employees come from their age, age group, not mine. Yes. Yes. So they, they connect with them. So right now, our company, our Great Cliffs Company, is completely run by my two daughters and my son-in-law. Um, my wife and I are there for, we deal with corporate stuff and we deal with uh, the bank, but they deal with everything else. It is the wow. best decision we've ever made. Um, they're running it as good or better than I could run it, and I don't have to be there. That's awesome. And oh, by the way, everybody, uh, Jerry is at his vacation home in Arkansas right now, and we pulled him out of uh, his vacation time. I know he, he and I totally respect people who shut it all down and and uh, and re regenerate, refresh. So uh, we're appreciative of you doing that, Jerry. Hey, I have two two final kind of thoughts. Um, one is, uh, and I'll put this back up again. Tell me about tell us about the book. Um, you know, what, why, why did you write a book and what do you want people to get out of that? Well, Don, I'll tell you what, I, I got calls from franchisees, not just in my brands, but in brands of all kinds all around the country. They would meet me at an IFA convention or they would meet me at something else. And they would say, I'd like to know more. I, I'm having, I'm struggling. Can you help me? So I ended up spending a lot of time on email and zoom and things like that, trying to help franchisees around the country. And I, I was, I felt their pain 
because you put your life savings into this and for whatever reason, you're not, you're not profitable. You're not making money. You're struggling. So uh, along the way, I just took a lot of the thoughts that I'd had and a lot of the processes I had when I was dealing with uh, mentoring and people that were struggling and put it into book form because I saw that as a way to, first off, get in front of prospective franchisees before they buy yeah. and give them some, some guidance so that, frankly, they make better decisions. So many people choose the wrong brand. I want to make sure they've got some tools to ask the right questions of franchisors, to understand the process and so on. So that was the first thing. Second thing was I thought a lot of struggling franchisees could go there and get information, kind of become, you know, the Bible, I guess, for franchising and so on. Uh, and it's a, it also gives them a connection to me. So if they need additional um, support, I can do that. And the book did well, which has led to me uh, creating a, uh, a franchisee support company, which there'll nice. be more on that coming out next week, actually, where nice. we're going to help franchisees and emerging brands with the franchisee side of this whole process and try and try and simplify it and clean it up a little bit. And, you know, I go to Washington, D.C. and fight for franchising all the time. And many of the issues that end up in front of legislators are caused because of this disconnect when people are choosing a franchise system and when they're kind of getting started in it. So I'm trying to bridge that gap a little bit. That's awesome. And you know, I spend most of what the time my company spends on is um, getting getting people in the right the right franchise or uh, if I'm, we're working for a private brand, being sure we're selecting the right people. So I'm in that space and, you know, and I, and I think there's a huge education there that's needed as well. We're gonna develop some online courses uh, for, for that. I think if the person, the buyer of a franchise is more uh, is better educated. Uh, yep. They're, they're going to be a, a better selection, which will lead into uh, your book and and your training company for helping them even further, kind of right. passing the baton to to you. So uh, so that's awesome. All right, the last question, Jerry. I promise. Um, I always ask folks: uh, Is there anything else that we haven't talked about? You know, or you haven't said that would you know? You just want to impart some final thoughts. Anything we yeah. haven't talked about that that you wanna you wanna be sure you get said? Yes, I try and include this everywhere I go, Don. I want people to understand that franchising is life changing, and you know uh, many franchisees buy in just to replace a job or because they don't know what they want to do with themselves or something. But if you <laughs> dig in, if you make the right decision and you really make it your passion, franchising is life changing. I, as you mentioned, I'm at my vacation house. I still work. 50, 60 hours a week. Most of it is around fishing or golf or projects here or something like that, but I'm working, uh, but I can do it from anywhere. And I love this process as opposed to making sandwiches or being in the shop or something like that. Um, it's life-changing for me, but I'm impacting three or four generations of my family through franchising. I'm be able, better able to take care of my parents uh, my kids are involved in the business and their kids are already starting to get involved. So because of the decisions we made and the multi-unit, multi-brand, scalable, scalable business we've built, we're changing a lot of lives. And we can talk about employees, too, because we've got about 250 employees that we're wow. impacting their lives. So I want people to understand franchising is, the I think, the simplest path to changing your life and the lives of the people around you. And I highly recommend it. And when you've got amazing people like Don Shin, who can give you <laughs> advice. There's no reason not to take a shot at it. Thanks, Jerry. I appreciate it. All right. So I'll just be wrapping up a second. Um, Zors and brokers, franchisors and brokers. Uh, Jerry talked about multi-units. If you find people with that strong corporate skill set, uh, they, uh, they can manage units and uh, they can manage more people. So go right away to talking multi-units with that type of candidate. And then uh, buyers of franchises, uh, if you are a multi-unit potential prospect, uh, look at uh, potentially the, the same you know, businesses that are, have the same clients, uh, businesses that will utilize very, very similar space. And that will make it easier for you to not only be a multi-unit owner, but also a multi-brand owner. So, hey, Jerry, this has been awesome. Uh, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks, Don. You bet. 